A couple of years back, I was extremely excited to purchase the Lenovo Chromebook Duet. While I've never been a fan of the Microsoft Surface-like form factor for a two-in-one laptop, the Duet was a huge step forward for the next generation of Chrome OS. That was worth the compromise on Google's computing ecosystem. Since then, though, Lenovo and a bunch of other laptop makers have greatly expanded their product lines. Lenovo sent us the IdeaPad Duet 5i to review, which retails for $789.99. With Windows 11 as the operating system instead of Chrome OS, I wasn't sure how I would feel about this type of computing device. While many of my original feelings towards this form factor still haven't changed, the Duet 5i did help move the needle forward for me. We'll start off with the basics. The I in the Duet 5i stands for Intel as the PC giant uses a 12th gen Intel Core i3 processor to handle the workload. The lowest configuration we have comes with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of SSD. I actually have had pretty good experiences with this type of chipset in the past. Based on specs alone, one could assign this Windows device into the lower mid-range category. Of course, this isn't just any ordinary clamshell laptop though. Somebody looking at the Duet 5i as a contender for their personal device is doing so because of this versatile form factor. Included with the purchase comes an attachable backlit folio keyboard that magnetically attaches to the tablet. That's a classic two-in-one structure as the Duet 5i instantly becomes a tablet the second it detaches from the keyboard. While we're on the subject of the keyboard, it isn't always a given that a included keyboard is actually good. The one here is good. I'm impressed with the level of quality Lenovo gives as an included keyboard. It comes in only a stone blue color that matches the cool shimmering body on the tablet. The mixture of plastic and cloth actually works pretty well together. The plastic body on both the Duet 5i and the Folio keyboard feels well built and exudes as much of a premium feel as plastic possibly can. There's considerable heft behind the combined 2.6 pounds of electronics built in here. I feel as if the laptop is quite sturdy to transport around and the Folio keyboard acts as a good case to protect the tablet. It's nice to have a durable daily computing device you don't have to worry about damaging without a case. As for the layout of the fo Folio keyboard, the keys are concise while still well spaced apart. It was a comfortable typing experience for my fingers to float from one key to another. There's a very shallow input with the keyboard that recoils just enough to not feel too hollow. I personally had no problems typing on here. However, it also wasn't anything too uniquely satisfying either. As with many laptop situations, the trackpad experience seems to usually match that level of quality that the keyboard also provides. There's a decent sized rectangular trackpad that is responsive and feels satisfactory to operate. I don't really have anything negative to say about both the keyboard and the trackpad. They do a good job while feigning a sense of quality. What I don't like about the Sfolio keyboard is the strip in which the magnetic connector resides on. It sits on a thin panel of plastic that is propped up by a narrow re residue of cloth that extends off the keyboard body. While the cloth material does feel durable with tight intertwined sewing, this dangling flap always gives me anxiety. I understand the design language and why this section needs to be flexible in order for the keyboard to lay flat on the surface, but I'm just not a fan of this type of look. Interestingly enough though, the tablet doesn't need to actually be connected to the keyboard magnetically for the keyboard to function. It can be used with Bluetooth. You can simply prop the tablet up with its built-in body stand and set the keyboard inches away for more of a comfortable viewing experience. I find that very neat and actually more comfortable to have with that Nintendo Switch type of portable experience. The kickstand on the body is superb. Once again, I'm not a huge fan of these built-in bodies with kickstands, but I can't deny that there is a superb quality behind the design of the Duet 5 Eyes hinge. Mechanically, it pushes and pulls in a very smooth manner. There's some sort of resistance to the motion that adds support to the base. Some of the two-in-ones that I've used in the past were either way too loose or way too stiff. The Duet 5i has perfected this to a T. 
The stand also offers a pretty decent range of flexibility in which it props up the tablet. It can rest the tablet anywhere between 120 to 150 degree positions. As I spent more time with the Duet 5i and the various ways you can actually use this type of tablet laptop, I found myself understanding why there is a market that has materialized years removed from the first surface. The fact that one minute I could be sitting on the floor reading a novel in tablet form, then the next it's attached to a keyboard on a table and I can get right to working on an article, I think I'm finally seeing the attractiveness with this type of form factor. The i3 CPU has just enough strength to get tasks flowing in an enjoyable manner. None of the applications that I use on a daily basis were like unusable here. Devices like the Duet 5i are meant to provide both personal enjoyment and business performance. It handled the work suite things uh, just fine, but the entertainment acts had just kind of barely squeaked by. Without a dedicated graphics card and only 8GB of RAM, gaming definitely isn't a suitable option when considering this as an only laptop. I could still run Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1080p with the lowest settings, but it certainly wasn't the most enjoyable that that game can be played while playing it on here. While Laura Croft makes every system look much better than it actually performs, the benchmarks gave it an average of about 20 frames per second. If you really wanted to play some games on here like a Tomb Raider, I guess it is somewhat playable, but probably not the best idea to buy it to play games. Lenovo does compensate by providing us with a magnificent viewing experience. The Duet 5i has a 12.3 inch LCD display that pushes a resolution of 2560 by 1600 p that's a sharp Quad HD screen at a 16 by 10 aspect ratio that has great viewing angles. It's important for the Duet 5i to be able to provide nice pictures from all angles, as a tablet often has to serve as a media sharing experience. Since it does have the ability to also be tinkered into different angles with the stand, I feel that Lenovo actually did a good job here. The colors are also nice and vivid. If you have a good landscape wallpaper and the tablet is just lying on a table, it does catch the attention of the eye. The touchscreen aspect of the display is also a benefit to have on a laptop device. My own biases aside, windows on a display of this size is much more manageable from a touch standpoint than it was on the early days of the surfaces. I actually found myself able to just navigate windows in full desktop mode with just my finger and it wasn't a chore. I've never been a fan of tablet mode on Windows devices, so this was a welcome surprise for me. The longer aspect ratio, however, is a bit awkward to hold as a tablet in portrait mode. A lot of tablet makers have gravitate more towards the squarish body shape as it is easier to hold for visual consumption. The 16x10 aspect ratio does make this a great look, though, for movies and games. The dual speakers are also a big contributor to the media enjoyment portion. They project and fill a room nicely without being distorted at high levels. It's a warm sound that has media-based distinction. I like the sound coming out of here. Since this is a tablet-based computing device, all of the ports are on the frame of the display. There are two USB-C slots on the left side of the frame. One of them is for power as the tablet charges with a USB-C brick. The power button and the volume rockers are on the other side, accompanying a headphone jack. That's not a lot of ports, but you can also use dongles to expand accessories for more intensive work purposes. The top of the frame is where the device's air vents reside. It's all dedicated for that. It stretches all the way across the top of the frame. The fan turns on pretty frequently and is noticeable even when idling. It's not the worst I've heard from a device of this nature, but I'm also a bit spoiled by fanless tablets. This is one trade-off for a bump in performance. Some people don't mind fan noises while others, a little bit of fan noise bothers them. If I was using this in a quiet library setting, the folks at the table next to me definitely will be able to hear it because it is somewhat loud. Intel mobile processors can be a little power hungry at times. I haven't seen like this really affect the overall experience on the Duet 5i. It can pull off about like an average of nine hours off a single charge. Of course, that varies depending on how I was using the device, but in general, I would say it has decent battery life that can handle a professional workday. Speaking of a workday, one beneficial thing to consider is that Lenovo gives us two cameras on this tablet. Unlike clamshell laptops with only an inner webcam, Duet 5i actually has a similar layout to a smartphone. 
on top of having that five megapixel webcam on the display bezel, there's also a five megapixel rear camera on the back panel. That's nice to have for people who actually do swapping between a selfie shot to a landscape view shot doing a web meeting on the field. This probably won't matter to a lot of normal laptop users, but I do surmise that some people looking to buy a two-in-one laptop actually do look at finding one that has the ability to present in this manner. For someone like me who isn't a fan of this form factor, I actually think the Duet 5i is a pretty darn good computing device. It does the tablet thing pretty well while providing enough oomph inside to be taken seriously as a work device. I don't have much to dislike here. At this point, the only thing that's truly holding me back from actually embracing one of these two-in-ones is the processing and graphical power for gaming and video editing. When I'm able to just plop a beautiful display onto a table and have a keyboard sitting on my lap to play MMORPGs or edit a video efficiently, that's the ultimate form of versatility that I can see myself being spoiled by. Once again, my Alex from the Subnautics, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know what you guys think of a computer like the Duet 5i. Do you like clamshells or do you like these two-in-ones? Which one do you think is more beneficial? And I'll see you guys in the next video. Well, look at that. You made it to the end of the video. Be sure to subscribe, follow us at all our social media links, and also definitely check out our website, Subnautics.com. You won't regret it.